As a general rule of thumb, no matter what I do, I try to stay organized as I progress through a process. Now the process we are embarking on here is no different. Every step should be done well, and if every step is done well, the end result will have a much greater chance of ending up in a good place. As long as the multiple pieces are sticking in place and not moving around, falling off the sculpture or something like that, which does happen, I like to rasp and clean up the edges that we've made, already made. I like to clean those up right now before making the next piece. There are a lot of sharp little resin pieces that accidentally extended a little above the clay wall and these stick out and has the potential to complicate things. Rasping these off right now versus later, it might not make a huge difference, but working clean and keeping on top of such issues is something I'd like to do. It will help in making sure I understand where one piece is and where the other piece is, where both pieces are. and help me understand that they're not the same. And in doing so, it'll help me control the build of the second piece. So it does have some value on a utilitarian level as well. It's not simply about aesthetics and just being anal here. Everything that is going to come into contact with the resin should be vaseline to make sure it releases properly. Silicone doesn't stick to anything but itself, just one of its many great qualities, so we don't need to use release agent on the silicone skin itself. The previous resin model mold piece we made, however, is going to stick like crazy to this new one unless we take some steps and make sure it doesn't. Brush Vaseline on the mold very carefully and make sure it gets into every nook and cranny and preferably on top of the wall as well, not only on the side of the wall that is meeting the new model mold piece. The last thing we want is for two resin model mold pieces to bond. If that were to happen here, I think, I think you might be screwed. It would be over. The mold would be ruined and you'd have to start over again. In order to separate model mold pieces from each other, we build clay walls. These functions as stand-ins, something we can build our resin wall up against. Later, once the multi-mold piece is done, we can remove the clay and build the next multi-mold piece up against the one we previously built. At that point, we have something to work against, so we don't need the clay. The clay is just there, so we don't have to make a resin wall with nothing to register against. Kind of free-form a resin wall in mid-air. And this would, of course, be very hard, if not impossible, to do. You can cut really nice and clean slabs of clay that will minimize the amount of work you need to do to make smooth walls by taking a fresh bag of clay and using a wire to cut a clean slab of clay. Slice the slab then into several strips and then apply them to your mold. If you just work with lumps of clay, loose lumps of clay, and try to make the walls that way, you're in for a lot more work and a lot more mess. As I've said, attention to details and working clean will give us more of a chance to end up with a nice result, which is of course what we are after. The slabs should be cut pretty thick, about as thick as a thumb is wide, thick enough so that there is material on the back side of the wall that can be used to hold the clay wall in place. The side of the wall facing the model mold piece we are about to make, we want to mess with as little as possible. If we push the clay down onto our mold and then use the excess clay on the back side, which we have because we cut the slab pretty thick, to hold the clay wall in place, squeegee it down to hold it in place, we should get a lot less cleanup because we haven't messed with the side that is essentially the positive shape of, or rather the negative shape of the resin model mold that we are about, the resin model mold piece that we're about to make. The clay should be pretty fresh for this stage as it needs a certain moisture level to stick to the silicone. Now if the clay is too dry, it will simply fall off the silicone and won't stay in place. It will be very difficult to make this step work. If the clay is too wet, it will slide around and be too tricky to keep the negative side clean. A perfect consistency is clay that is tough enough to withstand some abuse but wet enough to stick to the silicone. I have personally find that fresh Clay, straight out of the bag, tends to do the trick. 
I do like to cut the clay wall to an even height. Now I do this because I want the clay wall to represent exactly what my resin model mold is going to look like. By having the top of the clay wall be the height of my resin wall, it means I can simply work to the height of the clay wall and stop there. And I have something to register my resin model mold wall against. It helps me keep track of, of the work that I'm doing. The height you are after depends on the size of your mold and the size of the bolts that you intend to use. I'm probably going with a wall height of around 10 to 15 centimeters on this mold. This gives me plenty of room to run bolts through the wall and hold the mold-to-mold -mold pieces in place really easily. I like to round off tight corners, as tight or sharp corners are prone to breaking. A rounded corner is going to perform better and last longer, it's not as prone to breaking, it is much less likely to chip. On the inside surface of our mold here, I have a 90 degree corner and I round this corner off using clay and a sculpting tool. Registration can be made using a loop tool. I want registration that is going to allow some wiggle room side to side. This means a broad and shallow registration mark or dimple is going to be the thing we want. This will help during the molding and give me a better chance of removing the mold side to side when the molding without breaking my registration. Shallow and broad registration are also much less likely to, to snap off and much less likely to capture air bubbles when we are making them in the resin. If this is a de really deep hole, it's very likely that when I try to stuff it with resin, there's going to be some air capture at the bottom and or inside of it, and that's going to give me an even weaker or completely deformed and malfunctioning registration dimple. So shallow and broad dimples or registration marks is what you want in most scenarios. 